Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about Azure Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB evolved from Azure Document DB. It is a globally distributed, highly scalable NoSQL database. And when I say that it's NoSQL, I mean that the database itself does not enforce a schema or uh, relationships and referential integrity. And because it doesn't do that, it can be very scalable and very fast. Creating one is pretty simple. We go to the portal and we select create a resource. We can search for it here or find it under databases, Azure Cosmos DB. From here, we, we select our subscription, a resource group, I'll create a new one, I'll call it DG Test Cosmos RG for resource group. And then a name of our database. We're going to access this through the internet, and we need to give it a unique name because it'll be whatever we put in here. Dot documents. Dot Azure. Dot com. So I'm going to call this DG Test Cosmos SQL. Dot documents. Dot Azure. Dot com. The check means that it isn't taken. I can use that. Um, and then I specify an API. One interesting thing about Azure Cosmos DB is that we can access it through multiple APIs, either a SQL API, MongoDB, Cassandra, Azure Table, or a Graph API. So if we've got code that's already using one of these APIs, it makes it simplifies the process of migrating it to Azure Cosmos DB. If you want that scalability and that global distribution and that fault tolerance that Cosmos DB gives us. If I specify SQL here, then we'll access it through a SQL API and we'll put a a region in here, I'll just put it in um, about central US, I'm in Chicago, and then leave the rest of the defaults and just say review and create. This gives me a summary page, make sure that it's validated, it is, everything is good there, and then I click create. It'll take a couple of minutes to actually create this, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, we're back and our Azure Cosmos DB database is completely deployed. We can click on go to resource and see it right here and it, this automatically takes us to the quick start page. The overview tells us information about it, where it is, what resources group and so on, but quick start lets us get started. Um, in fact, if you wanted to see some sample code in .NET or .NET Core, Xamarin, Java, Node.js or Python, that's all available here and it will access this Cosmos DB using the SQL API. So I'll get .NET Core here and I'll say create items collection right there and that actually will create an items collection in our database and then when I download an application from here I'll open it up this is a zip file that I can then extract to my local hard drive I'll put it in c backslash test right here and then here's this application. There is a solution right here that I can open up inside Visual Studio 2017. And it knows that it's from the internet, so it's warning me that you might not trust it, but of course I trust everything that's on the internet because that's where all the kittens are. And from here, I can build the solution, make sure everything works properly. And that seems to work properly. You'll notice that there are some NuGet packages. And particularly this one right here, Microsoft.Azure.DocumentDB.Core. DocumentDB was the original name for Cosmos before we added all these uh, extra features to it. And so this NuGet package still has that name here. And we'll actually use that. That's an abstraction layer on top of the REST API that's making SQL or calls that are very similar to SQL syntax to do this. And you can see that code here in this repository here. Um, there's a very bad practice in here. We actually got, have the key and the URL here. That probably should put that into a um, config file. But in here we have a database ID called to-do list 
and a collection called items. Remember, we created that in the portal. And then in the constructor, we're actually going to create the database and create the collection if it does not exist. I'll look at that. That code, of course, won't run because that does exist. But if we come down here, you can see the syntax for doing this client.readDatabase. This, this test to see whether that exists. And if it doesn't exist, then we will create database. Notice everything here is async because we're making a web service call across the internet to do that. And we have things like methods to get item async. If we pass in an ID, that will return a single item. It's asynchronous, so actually return a task of that item. And uh, here's the syntax for that client.readDocumentAsync. Uh, down here we have get items async in which we pass in an expression that returns a boolean. It'll filter by that expression and return a set of items. Uh, and we have here um, create items so that will insert an item, a document into our database. Update item finds the item and updates it. Delete item of course deletes it and so on. All of that is in here and you can see this and probably won't want to use this as is because it's specific to this to-do list, but you can use that as a starting point for your code. Let's take a look at the application. There's even a little application around it that demonstrates this. It's an ASP.NET Core web application. And in it, you can create a new to-do item. I'll call it First, first thing I do is wake up, second, get out of bed, and some of you have already guessed that the third thing I do is drag a comb across my head. So this is calling the create method and and here you can see that we're doing this uh, one of these read methods here. These are the basic CRUD operations. CRUD is an acronym C-R-U-D that stands for create, read, update, and delete. So, delete. so typically when you're working with databases you want to implement those methods to create, read, update, and delete items in your database. And there's the code for doing it right here using the SQL API for a Cosmos DB database. And we can actually look in here and see in the Data Explorer those three items. In this database. Items, documents, there they are. One, two, and three. Notice they are stored as JSON documents. So we've shown you how to create a Cosmos DB, use the SQL API, and download the sample code to learn how to access that from our .NET applications. We also have in here Java code for doing something similar. Download a sample Java or a sample JavaScript for running Node or sample Python code. That's all available to us here to learn how to use this from other languages, other platforms. This is David. Thank you for watching.